Welcome to Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality, a show designed to share spiritual insights with you so that you can comprehend the universe and how it functions. You are about to experience raised consciousness. This is a place where spiritual principles are shared with the goal of assisting you to expand your understanding of both the seen and unseen worlds. Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality helps you to discern the timeless truths handed down from wise sages through the ages from the airy fairy nonsense that is being taught today. Now, here is your host, Sharon Lynn Wyeth. Welcome to Luminescence Common Sense Spirituality, the radio show that disseminates esoteric knowledge and common sense spirituality. Now, I'm Sharon Lynn Wyatt, and I've created Namology Science, which is the ability to know all about a person's personality and their soul purpose simply from their name. You know that we always start our show with that fabulous music and end it with Dee Lamar's song, The Shine, and you can hear more of her music at her website, which is dlamore.com, D-L-E-M-O-R.com. Now, our topic today is astrology of the United States and what's in store for the states of America. This country was born in freedom and is a representation for years on what individual achievements could be accomplished when people have freedom. It is said not to judge a country by how many people wish to leave, but by how many people wish to get into the country. So what does astrology say is next for the United States? And what role does God have and intended for the United States according to the astrology, which lets us know how that works? Our special guest today is Janet Amit. Now, I want to tell you before I read her bio that I heard about Janet from one of my clients, and the way that my client described her, I said, "Mm, I'm trying her out. And so I called for a session. Now, my mother's best friend was an astrologer, one of the few astrologers that Hitler had not killed and was incredibly gifted, was interviewed by Leonard Nimoy for In Search Of, one of those programs. She was very well known out in California and just an amazing astrologer. And in my entire life, I got so spoiled with her that only one other astrologer that I had met throughout the years came up to her standard until I met Janet. And so <laughs> Janet is that has that psychic piece right in there, along with her astrology gifts and talents. And that's why I'm just doubly excited to share Janet with you. And you know that we share Sandy Anastasi, who's our regular guest also, because I want to put a plug for her, too, with her astrology. So, and, and they're both very different and both very talented. Now, Janet, under the tutelage of her father, learned astrology at the early age of five. She's a ninth-generation astrologer and considered by many to be a hereditary psychic. Her clientele base is extensive, with more than 41,000 clients coast-to-coast. She's a well-known radio and TV personality, as well as a columnist, and writes for both national and local publications. You can currently find her column in the Sylvania Advantage. Now, Janet has over 40 years of experience in metaphysics with a primary focus on astrology, and is also certified as both a life coach and a wedding officiant. Kate Janet provides a rich selection of astrological horoscopes for individuals, companies, and interestingly, other astrologers. Now, Janet uses the most sophisticated mapping software available, which is known to be quite accurate. This, coupled with her intuitive insights, causes her readings to be absolutely dynamic. You know, I just absolutely have loved the two readings I've gotten from Janet. So excited that you're here on the program today, Janet. Welcome to Luminescence. Thank you so much. That's a wonderful introduction. Thank you so much. I love astrology. It's my passion. I've been in it my whole life and even as a counselor and working as a counselor I've always learned to incorporate astrology into my everyday you know routine with my clients one of the things that I I realized is is that my father always said that you know because we're Middle Eastern my father used a lot of Middle Eastern astrology along with Western and one of the things that he always said that everything in life has balance and we travel in cycles we're all in this constant, um, we call it a a 12-year cycle, 27 to 30-year cycle, and so on. But the cycle that we are in right now is interesting with what's happening, you know, when we talk about the United States, because the United States was born July 4th, 1776. 
approximately 4.30 p.m. in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So it was born under the sun sign of Cancer in the emotional sign of Aquarius. Now, what's interesting about that is when you take into account uh, the astrological picture and the component, and then you take into account the fact that this is a this is a sign of humanity. It's a sign of of uh, the Cancer part is uh, of astrology. The sun sign, the the Mercury aspect was in Cancer. The relationship sign was in Cancer. Jupiter was in Cancer, which is all about nurturing, home, family. And what does the United States do? It encompasses everyone. We take everyone in. We're a home to those that need a home. And then on top of that, the moon, which rules the emotions, which is ruled by Cancer, happened to be on the day that... um, July 4th, 1776, the day of independence, the the moon was in the sign of Aquarius, which is all about humanity helping others. And that's exactly what this country is all about. But like anything else, like like my like people, human beings, we all go through stages of um, ups and downs. And, and we've had, and our country has been fractured here and there, but we always seem to overcome a lot of these obstacles, you know, no matter what. So one of the things that's happening right now with the United States is we have some aspects that are aspecting us in the sign of um, in, in in the sign of Aquarius. Saturn and Jupiter are both in Aquarius now. Jupiter just moved into Pisces, and Saturn its occurrence happens every 27 to 30 years, as mentioned. You know we're in this this cyclic period of our life where we're going through a cycle of change, and this is exactly what's happening. So we are going through this huge transition, and what's even more so interesting is the South Node. Now, if in history, I, I like to look at things historically. I like to, my, to look at the past because my father, I quote my father a lot because he was my best teacher, and he always used to say that life can only be understood backwards, which is an actual quote, believe it or not. And he said that when we, understand, when we look at anything we look at, we have to look at the past and understand the past. And right now, we have an aspect that's hitting us. It's called the South Node, and there's a North Node. And what's interesting is when you look at the South and North Nodes, that we had, like the, in 1983, we had, um, I believe we had the Space Challenger, uh, the Shuttle Challenger, um, in the first, it was the, I guess it was the first American woman in space, Sally Ride, and that was June 4th of 1983. So right now at this time, we're going through a similar aspect. So there's a lot of phenomenal aspects hitting us right now that are actually showing us you know, change in our country as well. And I believe when you look at the the nodes and the south nodes and north nodes, that has to do with spirituality. It's awakening us to a new time, a new sense of independence, evolution, revolution. These are changes that are occurring right now with us. And we're feeling this. We're feeling the heat of this. So I go back to that period. I have a question first before you go back on. Sure. Okay, so Sally Ride, and I believe she just recently passed away, but I could be mistaken. They, um, she was into space, and if we've got the same configurations coming again, is that why there's now a space fleet? Because it was changed yes. from the Air Force and everything to a space fleet? So that was like yes. a precursor of now we're going into space more? Yes, that's that's exactly it. There's because we're coming back to this new phase, and 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 I believe she did pass away, but she passed away in 2012. I think um, okay. she was born May 26, and she passed away July 23rd, 2012. And she was the first, I guess, American astronaut woman, and and she joined NASA and obviously went to space in '83. But she was an amazing person but anyway getting back to this getting off on my i don't want to get on a tangent because i i go on these little bunny trails but um yes and and absolutely we're it's a a whole new phase of the space the the whole aspect with nasa where there's some changes coming up with this but even if you go back into the nodes i look at um this this net note aspect december for 1945 1964 83 2001 um it was right after 911 that it the no, node kicked in 
in uh, October 14, 2001 through 2003. That was when we were going through all of those crazy times with the, um, you know, the Twin Towers and everything. And then May 6 of 2020 through January 18 of 2022. So these, if we go back in history, we've had all this, these aspects hitting us. They're all, they're all pointed into history and th- things that have happened to us in the past. So yes, we have. This is a new. This is a new cycle in in our country, and this is all about. Um, you know, we're going to see a lot of changes. This is about. You know, this with, with it, whether it has to do with. Um, you know, space travel. Whether it has to do with what's going on in our country. There are some changes coming up, and what's interesting about. It's not just the node because that's just one aspect of what's happening astrologically. There are other things hitting. It's just I always look at everything, but in this particular case, I'm focusing on that because I believe this is also showing a lot in terms of our country, our um, the the issues with debt and things like that going on. I mean, there's a there's a lot of transition, and this is what we see going on with this. And also Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. Uh, that's associated with Aquarius is always associated with ab- abrupt change, forming communities, fighting for causes, te- uh, technic- uh, technical uh, advances um, in any of these things, uh, a new way of living, and it's going to take us into a new venture. And the os- the interesting thing about that is with Jupiter and Saturn squaring off um, with Uranus and Taurus, there's a lot of creative, you know, changes in our industries, and we're going to be adapting to new types of business, how we handle businesses, just the mom and pop, you know, companies, businesses, kind of going by the wayside. There's a lot more technology coming up, and there's a lot of changes, a lot of political changes, too, at the same time. So that's obviously we've seen that quite a bit. And um, so there's the, the alignments are going to push for change in every aspect of our life. And we're definitely seeing that new types of leaders, new type of leadership completely. And that's what I'm seeing. So there, there are some huge transitions coming up. And, and quite a bit of this is it's on, a, it's on a larger scale more than anything. And since probably the early 1800s, for example, Jupiter and Saturn, you know, with as the conjunction occurs, and we're we're looking at the fire, water aspects, and everything else. Um, we have so many new changes coming up in our even our technology, which I think is kind of interesting in that respect as well. So we are in we're we're in the throes of some of these transitions and changes, and as things start to shift a little bit more towards the end of the year. We're going to find other things hitting, like Venus, the planet that rules relationships, money. Um, it's it's going to go into what we call a retrograde, and that's going to be hitting more so like around the time where it's the end of this year, going into January, and that's when you know it's going to be um, causing a lot of changes in our relationship, marking closures, um, love, money, finances just defining all a lot of new beginnings and a lot of new changes in you know in personal relationships so these are some of the things that are going to be occurring and world power okay, so when you say changes could they be positive changes as well or some of these things can be positive some of these changes can be very positive because it's all about i i look at the changes being closure like i believe that this whole thing with the epidemic is going to kind of shift our you know, our interest into a different direction in that regard too. And I believe that we're going to have, we're going to gain closure to the epidemic as well. I mean, there, there are going to be some remnants of that. Obviously that's going to continue on, but I believe that look at how things have suddenly within a year that the, these shifts have taken place, even with the epidemic and everything else. But I believe that all these things that are happening to us are forcing us into more of a spiritual place because what's been happening with the clients that I see and and also the ones that I talk to online zoom you know what have you whatever they they're all it's like everybody is kind of seeking out more solace they're seeking out spirituality because they felt very trapped by um, all these things that have happened, you know, with the, the COVID and everything else. I mean, we've been forced to face reality <clears throat> that, <clears throat> excuse me, that it's time to really take a look at what's going on and 
kind of, you know, you know, grasp onto our spiritual realm, and that's what I think is happening more so than ever. I'm seeing so we're looking at things that are, would you say that another way of saying that is that we're prioritizing what's really important to us versus yes. what isn't? Yes, and I think there's a lot of that, quite a bit of that going on. The interesting thing about this, too, is I'm hearing that with people, they're becoming more in tune. You know, my father used to, he loved Carl Jung and King Solomon and all of that, and he would always say that without pain there can never be consciousness, which was kind of a quote from Carl Jung. So until we struggle, we're, we're really not awake, and now we're kind of, we're waking up. So these aspects, astrological aspects that are occurring, that are hitting us, we're getting hit pretty heavily. I mean, we are. There's there's some transits that are going on that are causing us to, you know, have to take a step back and reevaluate, you know, a, a lot of things. And that's what's happening. And it's interesting that we're talking today because the moon is in the sign of Sagittarius and the south node is right on it. So we're we're in this, this um, today actually with Jupiter in Pisces, the moon in um, Sagittarius, um, with all this Gemini th- stuff going on, we're in a grand square, and that means that we're feeling a little bit of a tug pull today, and a lot of people are feeling it. We have the the the, the full moon aspect, so it's been. I would say that this been, it, this has been a tough week. Have you felt it at all? I mean, have you experienced it with this this sense of this sort of like this up and down sort of aspect that's hitting? Well, I'm the wrong one to ask because I've been working 14-hour days. I am on a tour right now giving talks and then doing privates, and, and so it's like I'm too busy to <laughs> to, to have well, it all hit I, quite yet. I know, and I feel the same way because people ask me that all the time. Do you feel the effects of what's going on? Do you feel this? I talk to astrologers and psychics and all that all over the world, and I say, you know what? I'm so busy, I can't even feel anything, but I'm feeling it through my clientele because they're experiencing it. So I'll say, oh, yeah, that is happening. But sometimes the busier we get, we're, we're people that are in tuned, and the higher consciousness we have, the higher awareness we have, the more likely we are able to understand things better and um, and and get out of our get out of our head a little bit and feel a little bit uh, differently in that sense too. But definitely, okay, we're going to take a break right there okay. because it's time for us to go to our first commercial break, and then we're going to be right back. This is Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and our special guest today is Janet Ahmed. Before we take a break, just know that her website is her name. Janet is spelt the normal way, and her last name is amid.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Your conscious connection to a more mindful world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Om Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. I'm Kathy Williams, host of Sexy Mom Abundant Life radio show on Thursdays at 5 p.m. Eastern, 2 p.m. Pacific. On the show, we explore living abundantly in every area of your life. Ways to let go of limiting patterns and beliefs and to step into the flow of creativity and possibility, knowing you are supported by the universe. Mark Twain said the two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. The why is hidden in your name. Sharon Lynn Wyeth has created a scientific way of deciphering your name to reveal your contract for this lifetime. And your name even specifies the seven areas that are subsets of your soul's overall goal. Your name identifies who you are to both yourself and others. What does your name say about you? Contact Sharon Lynn Wyeth at info at knowthename.com for your stunning name review. These are the sounds of a dinner. A dinner that almost didn't happen. A dinner now served. 
thanks to people like you. Due to COVID-19, 17 million more Americans may face hunger. Feeding America is helping our neighbors in need. And if you're able, you can too. Donations are being accepted at feedingamerica.org slash coronavirus. Brought to you by the Ad Council and Feeding America. 200 Food Bank Strong. Welcome back to Luminescence, Common Sense Spirituality. You're with Sharon Lynn Wyatt, and our special guest is Janet Emmett. Okay, Janet, keep going. I, I'm sorry I had to stop you in the middle there, but we're fascinated. Oh, no, that's <laughs> fine. That's fine. One of the things you said was we've seen the decline of small mom-and-pop businesses, but in the yes. future, do those grow again and the big box stores decline? I think that we go back to the basics at some point, but I think that what's happening is um, we're we're progressing in our society, and I, I believe that there's so much technology that we're sort of like, I, I feel like we're focusing more on that, especially with this Aquarian, these Aquarian influences going on. When Saturn and Jupiter both moved into Aquarius last December 18, 2020, and December 20 of 2020, Saturn, which is structure, stability, um, it has to do with, you know, innovation, um, it has to do with inventions, new technology jupiter also joined it in the sign of aquarius it went out of aquarius jupiter did uh, may believe may 13th 2021 through july 28th 29th of 2021 for just it's just in pisces for a few months then it goes back into the sign of aquarius well where it will remain till the end of the year and then saturn continues in the sign of Aquarius till, I believe, March of 2023. But what happens is when you have this Aquarius, Aquarian influence, in the last occurrence would have been in 91 through 94, and then before that, I know I have all these dates, 62 through 65. So these were the times that Saturn, which rules stability and structure, had been in the sign of, uh, you know, Aquarius. So what happens is... It's, it's, we have all this, these new inventions, new technology, new, um, um, I want to say points of views on, um, uh, I want to say a higher consciousness, higher awareness. We're, we're starting to become, you know, more develop, more so developed with our, with our minds, our spirituality included. But what I would say is some, we, we, we crave that the mom, pa, you know, little businesses, a little, you know, things like that. We crave those, that the simpler things in life, too. Because what does Aquarius rule? It rules technology. It rules all that, these new innovative things. But it also loves um, simplifying. It loves um, the, the uh, what is the word for it, minimalist type of living. Because, and that's what I see going on. So people are going to start feeling the need to get back to basics. And some of this has to do with the smaller businesses that, you know, have been kind of shut down. We may go back to that. It may be a little while before that happens, which I would probably say maybe in uh, when Saturn goes into Pisces in March 2023 through 2025. I have a feeling we're going to go back to that period of nostalgia, back to the period of, you know, uh, that uh, like just really tapping into what feels good and what is simpler. But right now we're in this this period of our lives where some of the changes, there's so much going on, and we're having so much information thrown at us and having to deal with this information at the same time. It's just a lot, and it's a lot for us to handle and to be able to relate to. But, yes, I have a feeling we'll, we'll go back to the basics for sure. We have so what would, you, what would you give as a suggestion to people um, on how they can handle this better with, what, with the aspects that are going on and knowing the U.S. history? What can we do individually to make this a smoother transition for us? I think people need to, this sounds crazy, but I, I, and I say this, I say the same thing to my clients, breathe, eat healthier, take care of yourself, focus on, uh, feel grounded and, and tap more into your spirituality, tap more into your higher power. I think these things are very important. You know who I, who's one of the, who I admire the most, I mean, as far as like, 
people that I actually uh, would love to meet, Oprah Winfrey and Dr. Oz, because I feel that, especially with Dr. Oz and Oprah, look what she's trying to bring to the planet. I mean, some when you talk about healing and all everything that she's all about, it's all about this this sort of like tapping into your inner core. And Dr. Oz is the same way. It's like, and, and so I feel that there's people, leaders out there that are trying to help us get back to our core of who we are. And what I find to be fascinating is that even people that you would never think in, in bigger industries, larger industries, they're, you know, they're, they're starting to get back to what's, you know, the core of who we are, what's important. And some of these companies that are out there that, you know, that are, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of crazy stuff, but there's in, in balance to that, you have a lot of good people, a lot of kind people, a lot of people that are, you know, I want to say com- karmically restored, you know, that's not even a word, but I'm throwing that in, meaning that they're, they're in touch with who they are and their, their soul's purpose. So I believe that people need to get back to what is important to them, uh, back to the family and family ties and get grounded that way. But I, I believe what keeps me sane is I meditate a lot. I do a lot of spiritual healing. I do things like that. And I think that with all the craziness and chaos, it's like you're in the middle of this and you're, you're actually staying very grounded, very neutral. So I feel like it's important. It's very important to understand that. But the way the, the world is going, the United States, the greatest country in the world, I believe that we have our purpose is to, is to, is part of this healing that we're in. And America is an amazing country. We take everyone in. It's all about, you know, it's all about, um, it, it's, it's embracing the truth. That's another thing. It's all about truth. The moon is in Aquarius, you know, and, and with the United States and they're at the chart and the, all the Cancerian planets with, it has to do with, you know, motivation and, and um, just staying very grounded and, and very, and keeping your footing. That's what I would say. So in other words, you're saying this is a way of having a spiritual practice keeps us in the yes. eye of the storm where it's calm, even though the storms are yes. raging all around us. Yes, exactly. And, and we're coming up to this Mercury retrograde, too, and I want to mention that Mercury rules communication and it rules thought. And when Mercury, the planet of chat communication is in retrograde it's pretty basic because everybody knows about mercury retrograde it happens two three times in in a year and it has to do with our communication how we think how we process information that sort of thing and with mercury being in a retrograde may 29th i believe it's saturday uh, friday night and it stays there for a while till uh, june mid-june and when with mercury in retrograde people are going to feel a little less you know, they're going to feel a little less comfortable. They're going to feel more agitated. So we have to understand that this is a process, and what we have to do is we need to just basically try to work with that and and understand that my father used to say, and again, I quote him quite a bit, but he would say the free will is the higher law of the universe. So no, no matter what we go through, we have the free will to conquer and fix anything we need to fix. And we can work with it, regardless of the way the planets are. We can work with what is coming at us. If you have a strong constitution, and as a person, as an individual, if you're strong within yourself, you can handle anything. Your environment, your your um, your childhood, your environment plays a big role in our everyday life. And with Mercury being in, in retrograde, this is just another little hurdle that we can overcome. It has to do with how we communicate our delivery, the content of what our delivery is all about, that sort of thing. But, yes, I believe that our, our country is, you know, we're struggling right now. There's no question about that. There's a lot of debt. There's other things that we have to, you know, we have to bring the, the power back into our country instead of, you know, we're, we're sort of like sourcing out quite a bit. We need to start bringing it back to our country. But there's a lot of, uh, we have some hurdles, but we're going to conquer those things. We're going, to, we're going to work with it no matter what, and that's something I definitely feel. So I feel so like this. So the 2022, you know, 2020 was rough on people. Oh my gosh, it was horrible. Is, and 2021 is a little bit less rough, but it's still hard on people. 
So is 2022 when things get light again or things move yes. forward again? Yes, I think it's going to be better, but we also have to remember that we have uh, retrogrades hitting us in 2022 as well. Uh, the end of this year into um, January, we have that Venus retrograde along with Mercury retrograde. This is the end of the year into next year, and Venus represents money, finance, uh, business, that sort of thing. But when it's in retrograde, it can be a little chaotic. And then we have uh, Mars retrograde, which is really a very tough retrograde. Mars retrograde is um, one of the hardest retrogrades, and that happens every two years. Mars rules energy. It rules aggression. If you look at the years in which we had some, you know, some really difficult times, 20, um, 2018, we had a retrograde, a heavy one. In fall of 2018 was a Mars retrograde. We had one in 2016. It goes back to 2001 even every two years. And so we have one coming up in the fall of 2022, and that takes us from October through January 2023. That, that's going to be a little rough, but again, like anything else, we will be able to handle it and we'll be able to work with it. But it's another, it's another retrograde. But as I said, we, we are going to be able to get through this. It's a hurdle like anything else. But Mars retrograde is about energy. It's about aggression. I believe once we're past that, uh, that October through January 2023 period, I think it's going to be, you know, smoother. And even 2022, other than the retrogrades occurring, we're going to have sort of a it's, it's not going to be as tenuous and as difficult as people may uh, see it to be. It's going to be a little easier, but we have to be able to handle what's coming at us and be able to work with it a little bit better, and I think we will. People want to heal, and Sharon, and I believe that people want to heal. They want to be better. They want to be able to understand things a little bit better. I think as a, as a whole, as a as as we are as a as a community, we want to get better, and I believe that it's going to happen. And I believe the aspects can help us along the way. But it's again, it's an individual choice. And the, as I said before, the free will is the higher law of our universe, no matter what. So right. it's kind of interesting the way the world is going. But I I have a good sense about it. We have a lot of foreign affair, issues with the foreign affairs hitting, a lot of things going on in different various countries. And, you know, it's, it's happening. This is not something uncommon. And what's interesting is people say the good old days, the good old days. But I always say we didn't hear about it as much. There were things happening in the good old days, but we didn't hear about it as much because we didn't have access to that information. So it's not any different than what it used to be. It's just that we have more access to information. We know more about what's going on around us than we did 20, 30, 40 years ago, 50 years ago. So the world is, I believe, we're, I hope we're on a better path. I, I'm hoping and praying that we will be. Okay, so you said that technology is really going to come forward. Does that oh my include gosh, yes. some medical things that are going to really help people heal medically? Yeah, I feel it will, and I feel that we're already we're already beginning that transformation. Absolutely, and it's and it's going to be. I think that we just have this amazing, this this gift of like I said, it's not just insight, but I believe that this we're going to have some really great um, inventions. We're going to see people coming up with some great ideas and new inventions and things like that. It's going to be just the technology itself is going to be absolutely wonderful. And even I even thought, I had heard someone say once that they're going to even have earbuds, ear, earbuds that can um, translate foreign languages, you know, people that are going, you're going to be traveling. And um, they're going to have these new, there's this new idea about earbuds that can help to translate you know, foreign languages, so if you go to different countries, you don't have to, you know, put it on your phone or something, you know, it's going to, I mean, this is what I'm hearing, all these new things. And world powers, are they're going to be more, so peace coming up in different countries, and, and also like even in Syria and places like that. And I just feel like that um, the they're going to have new technology in our health ca capacity in that sense. It's just going to, I think there's going to be a lot of changes, but I feel the changes are going to be 
phenomenal. And this is with Saturn. I talked about this four or five years ago, that Saturn moving into the sign of Aquarius is going to be just amazing. It's just going to start taking over with this technology. Because if you go back into history, when inventions have taken place, and it's always kind of coincided with time frames and things like that. So, yes, I believe it's going to be quite amazing. Well, good. Well, I've heard about the med bed, so I'm, you know, they can help help us go back age-wise, you know, where our bodies are younger. So I'm thinking, okay, that's just good timing. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice to have a fountain of youth? That's something I think we all want, a fountain of youth. We would love that. You never know. I mean, it, it, you never know what can happen. I've always said that it would be nice to have one of those machines that you can walk into and just by a push of the buttons it can tell you exactly you know, what's going on with your health and to fix it at that moment. But, you know, that would, that would increase longevity and everything else. But you never know, I mean, what's going to happen. But <clears throat> sometimes when, when, I, when I think about technology, I also think about the fact that, you know, as advanced as we get, we can't lose sight of who we are spiritually. You know, because, yes, we're, we, have the, we have these amazing things happening, but we can't lose sight of our spirituality and who we are. That's very important because as intellectual and as smart as we all are, you know, we, 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 have to, we can't lose sight of other things, too. And, um, and I believe that sometimes as we, we sort of like get into this mindset that, you know, it's, that we have to sort of like really take, take stock of who we are on an individual basis. People want normalcy. We crave that. Security is important to all of us. No question about that whatsoever. But so I think the spirituality, we will come back and address the spiritual role of the United States in the world once we come back from this next break. Stay tuned. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hello, I'm Sandy Sedgbeer, host of Ohm Times Magazine's flagship radio show, What is Going Om? My passion is sifting through information, research and innovations from new thought teachers, speakers and researchers pushing back the boundaries of what we know about life, energy, metaphysics and the universe. I love shifting perceptions about who we are, why we're here and how quickly impossible becomes normal when we open our minds, expand our awareness and accept that the only limits that exist are those we place upon ourselves. So if you're the kind of forward-thinking, eager investigator of what lies beyond the current reality that most perceive, why not make a date to come play with me in the field of possibilities at 4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday, and together we can discover what's really going on. Are you feeling lost, confused, absolutely clueless, no way out, over, under, or through? Then it's time to have the Light Keepers, through their conduit, Sharon Lynn Wyeth, guide you by shining their light, illuminating the right path for you. Let Sharon share the wisdom of the ancient masters to guide you on what is coming next for you and to show you the silver lining in your current circumstances. Contact Sharon Lynn Wyeth at info at knowthename.com for a joyful, info-packed Light Keepers session. If I could be you, and you could be me, for just one hour, if you could find a way to get inside each other's mind, walk a mile in my shoes, walk a mile in my shoes, walk Walk a mile mile in my my shoes. shoes. We've all felt left out, and for some, that feeling lasts more than a moment. We can change that. Learn how at belongingbeginswithus.org, brought to you by the Ad Council. Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back to Luminescence, Common Sense Spirituality. You're with Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and our special guest is Janet Ahmed. Now, her website is her first name, Janet, J-A-N-E-T, and her last name, which is A-M, like Mary, I, 
BeLikeDavid.com. You can also call for an appointment. Her office number is 419-882-5510. Again, it's 419-882-5510. And you can also reach her via her uh, Janet Hammett at AOL.com. Okay? So there's three different ways of getting a hold of her when you want your own session because it's jam-packed full of news and information. And she does a great job looking ahead and synthesizing all of it in a very short period of time for you to know. Okay, so Janet, in this segment of our show, I would love to hear, as well as our listeners to hear, what role the United States plays spiritually for this world? You know, do we have a spiritual purpose? And what are we doing to help the other countries? If you look at it from a spiritual aspect, you know, like we look at India, and I always think of gurus and mystics and how wonderful all the pilgrimage is to India and able to get your spirituality or consciousness right. What role does the U.S. play? You know, I, I, I'm not sure I'm, I'm going to answer that in the best way I can. I think that the way, the way we are with our role in the United States, what we tend to do as a country, this is just my opinion, is we, I believe that United States, as I mentioned earlier, is that we, our role is to help everyone that's in need. And I think we've always, we've always been a country that's always, our purpose has been to, to be the one country that sort of like um, we take everybody in. And I think that's exactly, we've had to set some limits because of the COVID and other things like that. But I really believe spiritually, I believe that it's almost like this great country of ours opens its arms to whatever whatever we need or to help everyone in need. And I I don't believe that we always get reciprocated in that sense, but I do believe that that is our that has been our goal. This is a this is a country built. This is a country that's been built on, you know, um, hard work, and um, you know, and effort. And I believe that the way the way the astrological chart of the United States is in conjunction with its spiritual component, I believe it's always about doing for others and th- that's how i see it to be and when i say it's a country of nurturing it is we nurture everyone and we provide for everyone and but but we don't always receive that back but of course when you give you don't always have to expect anything in return but i do see this country as always being there for um for everyone in need and that the cancerian planets that we have are all about um, mothering and nurturing. It's a fe- I think it's a feminine country. It's a soft. It's a it's a motherly country, and, and which is interesting because you look at the Statue of Liberty and everything else. Um, but that's just a symbol. But uh, basically, that's what I think it is. And I just feel like that's our purpose. And I believe that it is. Um, you know, we the one thing that I that I find is that the United States also with the transits going on astrologically, I believe that right now we've had to set some limits and boundaries because sometimes we put ourselves out there and there's not a lot of reciprocation. But but it's okay because in the end we this country prevails no matter what. And but that's what I think our sole purpose is. We are we're there for everyone else. And the other aspect of this too is in with everything else going on, you know, emotionally, you know, the moon in Aquarius is about humanity. Aquarius is about a sense of helping. It's erratic sometimes, it's unpredictable, it's ruled by Uranus, the planet of unpredictability. But in the moon in our the the chart of America is in Aquarius and that's but it's also sort of like it has its pros and its cons where it's up and down sometimes, almost a little manic sometimes with our approach to things. But in the end, we always feel like we, we get our footing in the end, so to speak. But that's what I think our purpose is. And I would think that... Raising our consciousness. Is there a really good time to do that? I mean, it seems to me that when I get my own individual chart done, I get time periods where it's easier to raise your consciousness between this period and that period and whatnot. How is that as a whole for our country, for the populace, to be able to raise their consciousness? Does it look like we're going into a period where that's going to be easier? 
I think that that's happening right now because with this, when you look at aspects that are aspecting us right now, Jupiter moving into the sign of uh, Pisces, which is all about intuition, sensitivity, ruled by Neptune. It's almost like we're taking our rose-colored glasses off and we're looking at things more realistically. And it's, it's all in front of us, but it's all about sensitivity, nostalgia, consciousness, and we're raising that. But that's why I said earlier, I think people, the people that I communicate with, which it's not just in the United States, it's all over, but I'm getting this more with my clients that are in this country because uh, I have them all over, everywhere glo- globally. And I, um, and I, I feel that what people are doing is they're, they're tapping in to their, their higher awareness a little bit more. I, I feel this consciousness that we're coming into this, this age of um, awareness is taking place around us, and we're feeling it. People are feeling it, and they're, they're sensing it. And, um, but it's interesting because we're, we're torn between the materialistic world because we need it to survive, obviously, the financial, the security, stability, versus this, this uh, wanting to be more spiritual and craving that spirituality and that higher awareness. So it's, a, it's sort of like a little bit of a conflict there, but because it's the material world versus the spiritual world, and we're in battle with ourselves sometimes because of that. And I think that's human nature. Wouldn't you agree that we all seem to struggle with that at times? But I believe that we are, we are coming into that higher uh, phase of our lives. And I think, I think this COVID thing, I have to look at the positive and everything. That's just how I think. And I see this as even though people have struggled, last year was a hard year. We went through struggles when we had the, um, the Twin Towers, when, when that took place, you know, in 9-11, we, everyone was, we were shaken up because vibrationally on a frequency level, we were struggling quite a bit. And there were other things. Anytime something hits us that's major and catastrophic, the, we, we, we're shaken up by it. I mean, it just, it's the way it is. And so people never in a million years thought that they would have to, you know, deal with what we've had to deal with, with the COVID and everything else. But I believe that it has, I have noticed a lot more humility. I have noticed a lot more um, sensitivity with people. And there's so many good people out there that are helping others. There's some people that are, you know, little, there, there's, you know, there's always going to be uh, co- people that are contrary. It's just part of life, right? But, it, but at the same time, I'm seeing more of the higher consciousness than I am anything else. And I'm seeing this on an everyday basis. The, the prayers and how people came to the rescue. We did a lot of masterminding when all these were going on. These things were happening last year. Um, we would have, we would do a lot of, at the exact same time, uh, a couple times a week, we would do masterminding and seeing the world is being healed, seeing our country is being healed. But the spiritual component is we're united no matter what. And we, we, we might have uh, people that are sort of contrary and on the outside looking in, but as a whole, as, you know, we are united. There's no question about that. And I think okay, we've become so more so like that. Again, huh? Tell us again how we can reach you. Oh, my office number is 419-882-5510, and it's 419-882-5510, Janet Amid at AOL.com. Or at, through your website, which is also JanetAmid.com. Okay? Yes. And I just, okay, we just have very few moments left, so I'd love a, a very quick answer to this question, and that is if somebody wants to raise their consciousness, and they at the same time want to be at peace with what's happening in this world, what would be the best practice for them to do? And you could just I, think one. The, I, I think tapping into your spirituality, I think tapping, uh, meditation, uh, gathering as much information as they can about um, spiritual consciousness, awareness, listening to your program, you know, tapping into being surrounded by people that are like-mindedness, I think that's always important too. Uh, stepping away from the herd, meaning that sometimes you have you have people that are not as enlightened. Stepping a little bit away from that and finding your own path, 
and trusting your gut instincts and following that path. That's what I would say. You know, I love especially that last thing you said about trusting your own instincts because yes. I always think who knows better than us what we need to be doing next. As, you know, absolutely. It, trusting. We get that. Right. Trusting. Exactly. And that's, you know. I think, the way to tap into that because we we really are – I see so many people wanting to tap into that and trying to understand themselves fully, and I think that's the way to go, for sure. Right. And I would just add to that, pay attention to dreams, because I think our dreams are really foretelling. They're whispers from from your soul, and I definitely believe that. Yeah, I do, too. We've got an upcoming program that's going to be totally on dreams, because I think that's such a, a vital component part. And everything, Janet. I want to thank you so much for taking thank your time. Thank you so to be much for having me on. Thank today. you. It's this a pleasure. Is, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. This is Sharon Lynn Wyeth, and I'm your host here on Luminescence, Common Sense, Spirituality. You know, we always have our six regular fabulous ladies, and so next week coming back, we're talking once again with our what I call our regulars, or what some people would call our homies. Um, I'm, I'm starting to hear that word everywhere anymore. And so I welcome you back again next week, same time. And also the easiest way to find this show is go to knowthename.com, go to the radio tab, and there's a direct link to listen live and a direct link into the archives so that you can easily find this show. And with that, I just want to say have a most marvelous week. Thank you for listening. And as you know, we always close with this marvelous song, The Shine, and it's by D. Lamour, and it's D like the letter in David, L-E-M like Mary, O-R dot com, if you'd like to hear more of her music. And so with that, I'm signing off. Shimmer